Three easy dinner recipes? Yes, please. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Tonight we are making a very easy, creamy chicken recipe. It's gonna be on the stove top. It is called Creamy Herb Chicken. Do you say herb or do you say, is it herb? I saw a comment not too long ago and someone asked why I say herb and not herb. Is there a certain part of our country or somewhere else that says herb instead of herb? I wanna know, let me know. What you making over here? <laughs> what you got? Oh, oh. What kind of chicken do you want? <laughs> okay. We're, we're gonna have nice creamy chicken. You ready? Creamy chicken. You gonna help me today? I reckon. You reckon? All right, let's do this. All right, let's do it. All right, you wanna grab me the flour. I've got half a cup of all-purpose flour. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, huh? Nothing, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in a shallow bowl. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Shake and bake and I helped. Well, all you gotta do is put that in there and put chicken in there. No, we gotta season the chicken first. Oh. With some salt and pepper. I had two large chicken breasts that I cut in half just so that they were thinner and they will cook evenly and a little bit quicker. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to both sides. I did already pat this mostly dry as well. Pepper. And we're gonna add just a little bit of Italian seasoning too. When I was cutting my chicken breast in half, this one nearly fell apart right here. So I do that almost every single time I'm cutting chicken in half. I'll mess up one half of one. Okay, salt and pepper this side. Italian seasoning, that's a little bit much. Now we're just gonna take each piece of chicken and just coat it in our flour. You do wanna shake off the excess once you've got it coated. And then we're just gonna put it over here on this plate. Now I've got this large skillet I'm heating to medium high heat. All right. So he's taking over for me. Um, so we've got this large skillet. He's putting a little bit of olive oil in there. And we're just gonna cook these on either side for three or four minutes. Nice hot pan. Oh, yeah. You don't wanna crowd the pan, so maybe do two at a time. I don't know. He might be able to fit it all in there. We'll see. I think we can do it. Look, you might touch a little oil in there. Look at that. A little extra oil. <laughs> little extra virgin olive oil. Over here, I've got green beans started. Um, I just used bacon grease instead of actually doing the bacon tonight. We're taking the shortcut. If you don't have one of these in your kitchen, in your refrigerator, you're missing out, y'all. This is bacon grease. Yes, this entire thing is bacon grease. Okay, so he's starting to flip these. They've been going for four or five minutes on each side, or on the first side. So now we're gonna let the same happen on the other side. You guys really seem to enjoy when we read some of your comments and respond to them here in our videos. Today we are gonna read a couple of comments from Tuesday's video. If you missed it, Tuesday's video was an air fryer video and I chose a couple of comments from that video for us to respond to. All right, here we go. Dinner made easy with Dina. She said, for cat, in the tree issues, get some of the pure citrus lemon spray in the air freshener aisle. It's all natural. Uh, the cats hate citrus. My cat stays out of the tree. It just takes a few very small sprites or spritz. Maybe that's spritz. Spritz. Spritz as it is strong on the lower branches. Merry Christmas. Nice. That's a really good tip. We need a tip for that. That's what we need. Sorry, I'm looking up there because there's a snake bug. That's probably what was in my hair earlier. It was in your hair? Yes. That was in your hair? Yes. How do I miss these epic <laughs> moments? I'm, ass I'm How? assuming that's what was in my hair. I felt something crawling Look, on my head just, earlier. He's just calling. He's just coming to us right here. He is. He's. Oh, don't let him Look. fly in my hair. Can you get him, please? I, I can't reach him yet. Okay. Oh. I, I still can't reach him. Do y'all have a stink bug problem at your house? Oh, right. stink bugs are awful here. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? I got it. <laughs> Grace, you about dad, honey. <laughs> rolling and that thing went flying past me oh yeah, man this is how we roll anyway thank you for the suggestion yeah. about the <laughs> the citrus spray for the tree because yeah. this one 
it's really hard to keep her out of it. She is ruthless. Yeah. It's like, oh, a Christmas tree. <laughs> she goes nuts for it. <laughs> All right, these are done. So he's just gonna remove them from this plate or remove them from the skillet and put them on this plate. A good color on them. They do have good color on them. Perfection. Okay, and now we're gonna turn the heat down a little bit, yep. And grab that chicken broth over there. Yeah. We got one cup of chicken broth that's gonna go in. So for the seasonings, we've got a teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, basil, and oregano. And then we have a half a teaspoon of dried mustard. We wanna bring this to a boil, which is already starting to come up to a boil. So we did turn the heat down to about medium low here. He's got a can of cream of chicken soup. He's gonna add that in. We're gonna whisk it in, make this nice and creamy. And then once all of that is combined, we're gonna go in with some milk and some sour cream. Now, if you prefer, and honestly, I prefer, you could use heavy cream. My grocery store has been out of heavy cream, it seems like, all the time lately. So now we're gonna add in, the recipe calls for three-fourths a cup of sour cream. We're gonna add in about a half a cup first and whisk it around and see what we think. And then we're also gonna add in a fourth a cup of milk. So we just went with about a half a cup of that sour cream. Now the secret ingredient is a couple of teaspoons of fresh lemon juice. And these lemons are seedless lemons. I've never seen that before in my grocery store, but they had them this time and I got them just because, I mean, that makes it really easy to squeeze into a recipe. You don't have to worry about seeds. So we just need like two teaspoons. So probably that whole lemon, cause it's pretty small. Okay, let's just whisk all of that together. Now that it is completely combined, we're gonna add our chicken back in. Now our chicken is done. It's completely cooked through. We're just gonna let it hang out in this sauce. We're gonna spoon the sauce over it for about three or four minutes, and then it's gonna be time to eat. Oh my goodness, y'all, I wish you could smell this. This is going to be divine. I just wanna say thank you because you cooked what I asked for. I did. <laughs> I said, so, I want some, some chicken and some sauce. Yeah, he said he wanted some a creamy, gravy. creamy yeah. sauce on his chicken. That's so right. I found this recipe just for him. You did good. Well, that cut easy. No knife needed. Good. On these guys. Wow. First of all, the, the chicken is extremely tender. Good. Like, wow. Pan yeah. fried chicken. Yeah. That's this tender. Yes. The flavor of the sauce is incredible. Those uh, spices and everything that you put in there, the, yeah, the not herbs. spices, but the herbs yeah. with the garlic yeah. powder. Mm -hmm. Whoa, in that cream? Mm -hmm. You're talking about creamy. This stuff is, look how creamy this is. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, you've sold me on it. Now I want to take a bite. <laughs> Give me one second, please, ma'am. It's so creamy and he's right. That lemon is mm -hmm. what takes it over the top. So I highly recommend, you probably have all the ingredients for this on hand already, so. Yeah, you gotta make this. This yeah. is really good. You're gonna be very happy with the results, trust me. Absolutely. And you could do so much for, in terms of sides with this. Yeah, you moved to this side. You thought maybe if you tapped me on that side, I would respond. Hmm. I love you, little Lou. So for our second meal today, we're having it for lunch. I was just gonna do baked fish, but every time I said I wanted to do baked fish, Steven said, you mean fried? You mean fried? So I took the hint and we're gonna do fried fish for lunch. I'm also going to make some homemade uh, potato, homemade potatoes. That's what I'm gonna make, homemade potatoes. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna plant them and wait. I'm also gonna make some homemade fries using some potatoes that we're just gonna cut up and put in the air fryer. That's our favorite way to do fries. If you haven't made your own homemade fries uh, using the air fryer, you're missing out, you should do that. Every time I said baked fish, what did you say? Fried. <laughs> <laughs> so I volunteered him, voluntold him. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> that I'm he, all right with that. He, okay. he was gonna do the frying because I really just don't enjoy that at all. So he's gonna do it. I mean, you can bake it or you can fry it, but we're gonna fry these because we're gonna bread them. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll bread them in some uh, some flour. Some we'll spices. Dredge them in some egg wash. Yeah. You know all that good stuff and okay. get a nice crispy crust on the outside. So what we got to do first is heat up this cast iron skillet and add some oil to it and get that oil up to temperature. Oh, yeah. He's taking all my oil, y'all. All of it. All of what? The oil. <laughs> the oil. The oil. That's probably good enough. All right, so he's gonna heat that up and we're gonna get started. He is cutting up, this is cod that we have thawed out. He's cutting them into strips. So we're gonna have kind of like fish sticks today along with our homemade potatoes. <laughs> you missed that. What? I, ca I called the homemade fries homemade potatoes. We're making homemade potatoes We're gonna have today. some of them homemade taters in Taters, here. that's right. So he's doing that. I'm gonna create an egg wash for the fish sticks. I've got these really large russet potatoes. I always leave the skin on. It's completely up to you though. They're stripped, but then they're cut in half because the cod can be quite thick. Yeah, some pieces so, were thicker than others. Right, so, so that's, that's what we're looking at. Okay. About three inches or so like that. And then we're just gonna dry them off a yeah. little bit there, soak up some of this liquid that came out of that. Yeah. And get them ready for the dredge. Okay. We'll make sure they're pretty dry. We don't want a whole lot of water on these guys. Yeah. So now that they're dry, he's going to dip them over here in the egg wash and we're going to create a dredge right. to flour these or to coat these. And we're just going to eyeball this now. So we, we may need some more spices in the end because we're going to make the dredge. I mean, this is a lot of fish. Yeah, we may need we some more. We wanted to go ahead and cook up all the fish anyway. So, yeah. um, so we got flour. Yeah, we're just going to start adding flour and we kind of eyeball it. Yep. This is not an exact science. And then we'll probably do kind of close to equal parts on the uh, cornmeal corn meal and everything. Now mine is self-rising cornmeal, which is fine, but it may just kind of, you know, be a little bit thicker looking because of that, but that's fine. Right. And then we've yeah. got some seasonings. This is the Auntie Nono's uh, seafood seasoning, mm -hmm. but you could definitely use your own seasoning. Um, I know paprika, yep. salt, pepper. Paprika, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, you know, that type of thing. All the things. Yeah. And then mix it in real good. It's gonna give it Sometimes. lots of flavor. That's gonna give it a lot of flavor. Yeah. Smell it. Oh yeah, that's what you want. And if you don't get your fingers all coated and messy, I mean, are you even cooking? Right, wow, exactly. He wanted some more pepper. Oh yeah. Just add a little bit more salt. There is some salt already in that seasoning, but he's just gonna add just a little bit more. Yep. I'm gonna let you finish that up. I'm gonna go over there and start working on the fries. Sounds good. All right, I'll be back. After you cut up your fries, just put them in a colander and you're just going to rinse them really, really well and then you're going to pat them dry. That is the secret to getting really good air fryer french fries. Okay, I've got some olive oil. We're just going to coat these in some olive oil, toss them around. And then once they're all good and coated, you add your seasonings. We're going to use some seasoned salt. This is the Auntie Nono Steakhouse seasoning salt. I'm just going to sprinkle that over top and toss it around. And just remember, you can always add more at the end too. It doesn't really matter. So let's go over here to our air fryer and get these in there. All right. So we coated the bottom with a little bit of um, oil spray and then he is adding just a little more seasoning salt on top. And these are going to go in the air fryer for about 13 minutes on 400 and we'll just check them. But of course you need to plug it in first. It really helps plug in the appliance. Okay. We're going to do 400 for about 13 minutes. Like I said, I will um, shake it about halfway through. Okay. What's your temperature right around 350 ish yeah. or so? Um, this one is at see, we're at 345, 350. All right, that's good. Okay. And then once you put your fish in, the oil will start to cool off. But since we're shallow frying these, we just want to make sure that we're moving them in the pan so that they don't burn yes. on the bottom since they'll be touching the uh, bottom. The end. bottom, right. And we don't want to overcrowd. That's enough, yeah. So that's probably about enough. My goodness, this smells so good. So 
So how long do you think that was? I think between four and six minutes. It depends on the uh, thickness of your fish. Okay. They don't take too long to get them in here. I am working on a little bit of tartar sauce. I will link a recipe below. I've made this tartar sauce on my channel before. I just kind of loosely follow the recipe that I'm going to link below. I just kind of keep tasting it and making sure that I like where it's, where it's headed. And this will go really great with our fish. <laughs> That's looking good, guys. Set that down over here. Now look at this. We'll finish them up here. Watch this right here. A little bit of lemon on top. Oh, Let's grab those fries out of the air fryer and eat. We'll talk about that in a minute. Ah. That's a new addition. <laughs> it's my new best friend. <laughs> All right, look. We're about to get into this best friend right here. Yeah. Charter sauce and some of these fish sticks. Fish sticks, fish nuggets. Whatever. Fish. That's what you want. Wonderful flavor of the of the batter. Yeah. Crispy, flaky fish with the tartar sauce. A little bit of pop of the lemon juice that's mm -hmm. on the top. That's what you want. <clears throat> I'm guessing it, it hits spot more so than the baked fish would have. Oh yeah. <laughs> Y'all, he was so against me making baked fish. So against it. All right. We've shared a fish and chips before. It's been three or four years ago. It was a beer battered uh, fish. So I will link that recipe below too if you want to try either one of them. So this is all that's left. <laughs> she likes fish, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. My goodness. Okay, so let's 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 go over here and look at this. This is the new addition to our house. This is not new, as you can tell. It's an antique, but I got it from my friend Tabby. She had it at her house. Tabby, who was in my brownie video not too long ago, she's had it in her house for quite some time, and didn't need it anymore. So I've always admired it anytime I go over to her house. And I have looked for a hutch for our dining room forever. But most hutches are much larger. This one. They don't work. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's a remote. getting the full effect. There's a remote control, babe. Oh. Never mind. Go ahead and do what you're doing. <laughs> Just hold, please, y'all. Sorry about this peanut gallery over here. As I was saying, most of the ones that I've seen before are too large for our space. Or if they were smaller, they needed a lot of work. And this one is perfect. I don't know if you can tell the color. It's kind of like a blue gray color, but it matches our rug perfectly. I just love it so much. So you'll always see that in the back of our videos now. It's the perfect spot for it. I keep coming in here and visiting it because it's just so pretty. <laughs> Our next recipe is our subby supper of the week. If you're new around here, you may not know what subby supper is. Subby just stands for subscriber, and that means one of my subscribers has sent in a meal that we found interesting or sounded good, so we're gonna make it. This recipe comes from Sandy. It's going in the crock pot. Sandy has been married for 35 years. She has four grown daughters. She says she has one daughter that doesn't eat poultry and one daughter that doesn't eat beef or pork. So a lot of times she would have two different crock pots going. So this recipe is very easy. It only has four ingredients. It goes in the crock pot. This is what we're gonna call an Italian pot roast. We're gonna serve it over mashed potatoes later today like a regular pot roast, but she did say if you wanted to add in a can of green chilies, and then you could shred this and make it into burritos. And the other variation she gave me was that you could add some extra basil and oregano to really punch up those Italian flavors and turn this into Italian beef sandwiches. So if you have leftovers from the first night, you could definitely turn it into one of those other two dishes. I'm excited to do this one because it's only four ingredients. It goes in the crock pot. It makes my life so easy. I'm just going to put our beef chuck roast here in the bottom. 
Over top of that, you're gonna put a pack of the dry Italian dressing mix. We need one onion sliced. We're just gonna put the onion right on top. And you wanna add in a can of petite diced tomatoes. That's it, my friends, so easy. Sandy says to cook this on high for about six hours, and then we will serve it over some mashed potatoes later this evening. Lisa Lehman, she said, try cooking, or try looking up conventional oven recipes. Convection oven. Oh. <laughs> Let's try that Let's again. Let's try that again. <clears throat> try looking up convection oven recipes. That is basically what the air fryer is, just on countertop. The world will open up to you. Love your videos. I love how real it is. Love you because of your messes. Love from Texas. So if you have a convection oven, you don't have a need for an air fryer because you already have an air fryer. Um, but she's right. If you just look up convection oven recipes, there's so many more recipes than just looking up air fryer recipes. So that's a really good tip. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, really good. <laughs> I'm having difficulties. <laughs> Okay, try to be all elegant and sophisticated. Uh, it's supposed to be messy. Mm -hmm. We got some beef and taters up in here. Beef and tatties. Remember that? Oh yeah, I do. Beef, uh, it was uh, mince and tatties, but this ain't that. This is roast and tatties. Right. <laughs> this looks good. Got some, I don't know what this is. This What is that, Rotel? No, it's oh. just diced tomatoes. Oh, okay. I got you. The onions and tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Great flavor, really good flavor. If I had a little bit more of the gravy, I might. Be able to... <laughs> he was trying to convince me to put more gravy on his plate, but it's just liquid, like it's not a gravy. We could have thickened it up if I wanted to, like put it on the stove top maybe and thickened it up, but I didn't have that, so. I think you should put just a little bit of the sauce in there with it. I mean, it's got some on there with it because you can't help but get some up there in the right, bowl. Right, right. But maybe put like a little smidgen more in there. Wait, 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 wait. Smidgen? Smidgen more. Or smidgened. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if you've been around for that whole conversation when he said smidgened instead of smidgen. Yeah. You need to get more of the sauce. So he went back and put more sauce on there. That's what you want. That is really good. Well, Mix them with the potatoes too? Yeah. I'm gonna go do that. I don't know if y'all can tell. I've got a little bit of a cold, so I can't taste things very well right now. I can taste it a little bit, but let me go. Oh, man. Let me go add some to mine too. Oh, that's it. Okay. That ranch, or not the ranch, but the uh, Italian, Italian. the Italian seasonings and everything inside of that juice or gravy or whatever right. you wanna call it. Just so you know, I put uh, cream cheese in the mashed potatoes. Do what? I did, I snuck some in there. Just about two ounces, a very small amount. But we were completely out of heavy cream, and we didn't have any sour cream either. So I needed something creamy, so I put cream cheese in it. I don't taste no cream cheese. It's because I put a very small amount in there. Girl, you need to leave well enough alone. Trying to put cream cheese in everything. Alright. Thank you, Sandy, so much for sending this over. I'm going to agree with Steven. It needed some more of that sauce on there. Yeah. It's so good. So flavorful. Mm -hmm. This is comfort food, which is great, which is great because I am not feeling my best. So this is hitting the spot. Thank you for cooking, baby. Well, I, mean, I, I know you didn't feel up to it. Well, all I had to do was make the mashed potatoes. I mean, I made the other stuff, but I made it this morning before I started feeling bad. It just kind of hit me all this afternoon. Just I started sneezing like crazy and now... Fun times. It's that time of year. It is the season.